What's up guys, Justin here with TheFusionEssentials.com back with another Fusion 360 animation tutorial for you. So in today's video we're going to learn how to export an exploded view animation where the different parts of an object move outward as a part of that animation. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So creating videos like this one can be really good for showing kind of how something is put together or how it's been built. And so we're going to use this simple table model that I created a while ago and uh, you can see how the way that we've created it is we've got all of the different parts and pieces in here as components inside of our model. So the legs are in here as components, the little skirt that goes around here is a component. Um, all of these are different components. Well now we can go to the animation tab by clicking this drop down and clicking on animation and we can start animating it. And so the first thing I want to point out is there is an auto explode tool at the top of the page. So if you were to just select this whole thing and try to use this auto explode tool, you can see how this tool can explode out part of your model. But the problem is the pieces always go in like weird directions, right? So um, like even if I was to put my scale way up here um, and click the checkbox, you can see how yes, this has added the movement of all of these objects in kind of exploding out. However, the problem is this isn't really what we're looking for, right? Like we don't just want everything scattered all over the place. We want this to stay close enough together that you can see the whole, um, but not so far apart that everything starts looking weird like this. So we're not really gonna be able to use the auto explode tool for this. So I'm gonna take all of those pieces and just uh, put them back in place and then just do a shift click and delete out this part of the animation. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna manually move all of these pieces apart. And so we're just gonna do that using the transform components tool. And so this is gonna be pretty easy to do. One thing I would recommend though, is I would recommend going down into your animation timeline and setting your time to something other than the zero point right here. If you start at the zero point, then any transformation you make is gonna get applied before your animation. So for me though, I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna go to about two seconds for right now. And we can adjust this later, but what I'm gonna say is I'm gonna say that I want this tabletop to move up over the course of two seconds in my animation. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select my object, I'm gonna set my timeline to two, and I'm gonna move this up maybe like 15 inches or something like that. So just far enough that you're gonna be able to see the different parts and pieces in here. Notice how this is working a lot the same way that the move tool works in design mode. But I'm gonna go ahead and click on okay. And you can see how what that does is that adds a movement specifically associated with that plywood top. And so now if I was to drag this back to zero, and then click the play button, you can see how over the course of two seconds, this tabletop is gonna move up away from um, where it was originally. And so we can do that for all of our different parts and pieces. So this one, for example, I'm assuming that I'm going to want this to transform by moving maybe down like five inches and also out maybe like 15 inches. So something like that. So I'm gonna play an animation like that one and then I'm gonna click on play. Notice how I set my timeline to the same point right here. So this whole thing is gonna come apart um, just over the course of two seconds. So now these two pieces are gonna move out. And so what I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and I wanna set the rest of these to do the same thing. So this one, I'm just gonna animate it transforming down, negative five, out, negative 15. I'm gonna click on okay. I'm gonna do the same thing for this one. So down five, out 15, just like this. And so now if we were to look at our animation, you can see how this whole thing is going to come apart at once. And so I'm gonna do the same thing for the legs really quick, just following the same process. And then let's talk a little bit more about maybe what we could do with like a camera movement or something like that. And so if we click on play, you can see how this whole thing, all of the parts and pieces are gonna move apart in the way that we set them. And so now what I wanna do is I want to create a camera movement. And so what I wanna do is I wanna start by setting my base camera movement. So all I need to do in order to do that is just move my camera over the present right here and then adjust this. And so when I do that, what that's going to do is that's going to set my base camera movement. Well now, 
if I move my timeline to two seconds and then I adjust my camera right here. So let's say we wanted this to orbit or something like that. You can see how this is going to set my second camera movement to be at two seconds. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna animate the transition between my original camera point and my new camera point. So now if I click play in here, you can see how my camera is starting to fly around this object. And so from there, you could do a lot of different things. So if you wanted to, you could take this whole thing and you could extend it. So I could just do a shift click and select all of these and then drag them out. So maybe I wanted this animation to run a little bit longer. I could drag this out to like six seconds or something like that instead. So I could set the duration of this movement to six seconds to slow everything down. And notice how I can adjust all of these at once. And I do that just by holding the shift key and clicking to select them all and then clicking and dragging the end on the timeline. And so what I might do is delete out this camera movement. And maybe I would set this so that my first camera angle is right here. Then maybe set this so that my second camera angle is over here. And then I could do the same thing at the six second mark. So I could go back to that original camera movement. So now, and you have to be a little bit careful because notice this is gonna pick the, uh, the quickest point between those two camera locations. So instead of selecting those like this, what you would probably do is you would set your base camera to be right here, and then you would set kind of an intermediate location. So maybe at like one and a half, you would have this fly down and be right here. And then at three, you could continue this down right here. So you can see how I'm setting intermediate points for where my camera would go. And then for my final one, I could just go back to this corner right here. So now if I play this, I should get about a 360 degree animation between those different points. And you can kind of play around with these to make sure that you're getting more of a smooth transition. Obviously I'm making this move a lot over a short amount of time, but you can add these different views in here using your camera tools. And then let's say that you wanted to also animate this coming back together. So what you could do is right now we have one storyboard, right? A storyboard is like a clip in a longer animation. Currently, and I deleted out those camera views, but currently I have an animation where this is going to fly apart just like this. I may rotate my camera down just a little bit. Well, what you can do is you can add a second storyboard in here. And so when you create a new storyboard, what it does is it gives you an option to either start clean, which would be completely blank, or you can start from the end of your previous. So if you wanted to, you could click on OK, and you can see how when you start your new animation right here, um, what happens is um, this maintains the location and orientation of all of your different objects that you had at the end of your first storyboard. So alternatively, what you could do is you could copy this. So right click on your storyboard and copy it, and then you could right click in here and you could paste your storyboard instead of creating a new one. So you can see how what that does is that creates a storyboard copy. So now you have a storyboard one with your animation in it. You have a storyboard one copy with your animation in it. Well, what you can do is you can right click on this to click on reverse. And so when you click on reverse, it's gonna take everything in here and it's gonna start from the end and move to the beginning instead of the other way around. So now we have an animation where everything comes apart and then another animation where everything comes together. And so now that we have those two storyboards, you can export those into a video. And so the way that you can do that is you can go to publish and click on publish video. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna give you the ability to export this to a video file. And so you can either set if it just does your first storyboard or your current storyboard or all of your storyboards. I want this to be all of my storyboards because I want this to take my first and second clip and make them into one movie. And you can adjust this to whatever resolution you want. So I'm probably gonna do a 1280 by 720 for right now. I'm just gonna click on okay. Then it's gonna ask where I wanna save this. And I usually save my animation files to my computer. So you can just check this box and then click on this little button right here to find where you wanna put that animation. And then you can rename this. So table 
exploded view animation. And then you can click on OK, and what it's going to do is it's going to publish this as a video. So it's going to export this as a video file that you can then open on your computer. And so if you were to open this video file, you can see how this has been exported as a video AVI file on your desktop. And so you can build on top of this and create more complex things. So you could have like this go sequentially, so one piece fly out at a time, or really whatever you want instead of having it all go um, at once. You could do a lot of different things with this once you understand the basics of creating this animation. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Was this helpful to you? Have you created animations like this in Fusion 360? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Fusion 360 content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it. I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.